Hi, Minister. Good to see you again. Thank you so much for making the time. Uh, no problem. Thanks for having me. Uh, Minister Freeland, in her letter today to the Premier, uh, said that your government's claim that a separate Alberta pension fund would require lower pension contributions is, quote, based upon a flawed analysis of the share of CPP assets that Alberta would be entitled to. How sure are you of your math? Well, you know, I think one thing we've asked of the federal government uh, is to, to show us what their number is and please show their work. Uh, the Life Works report is publicly available. It's 90 pages long. It's been poured through by many. We've invited the Canadian Institute of Actuaries to dig into the report, speak to the authors. So we think that we've definitely shown our work. And if, if they think that the interpretation methodology or analysis is flawed, um, I can't wait to see theirs. I think that's the next step in this conversation. Has the minister at any point told you that the federal government will supply those numbers? Uh, no, no, we've asked for it. Um, I've asked for it in verbally in a conversation with her and then I've asked for it formally in a letter. Uh, but as of yet, no. In the conversation that you verbally had, what, what was the response? Is there a reticence expressed or is there uh, a promise to do so later on? Uh, no promises were made. I promised her that I would continue to ask for it, and uh, she could expect to hear that at the FPT. So I, I want to ask you, circle back then to the question around the math. I do take your point. I think it's a fair question to ask of the federal government that they supply their own numbers if they say yours are wrong. But there are a couple of reasons why there has been pushback to the LifeWorks analysis. Let me point out first uh, a briefing note prepared for your predecessor, Travis Taves, I believe back in 2019, that came to the conclusion that Alberta would be entitled not to 50% of the CPP's assets, but to about 12%. Trevor Toome, an economist with the University of Calgary, has done a more recent analysis following the LifeWorks analysis. He pegged the number somewhere between number, pardon me, somewhere between 20 and 25%. And then finally, if you added, let's say, based on the same math you're using, Ontario doing the same thing, you would completely eliminate the entire assets of the CPP. I'm, I'm no mathematician, but I can imagine that math does not add up for a lot of Canadians. Again, I'm going to ask you, how sure are you of that math from LifeWorks? Well, I think the, the formula is in the federal legislation. That's what the report is working off of. Uh, the fact that it adds up to more than the pool of CPP currently um, is what happens when you only have three net contributors in a pension plan. Uh, so it's their, it's their legislation, it's their formula. It's been there since 1966. It was amended when the plan was uh, changed from a pay-as-you-go to a modified pay-as-you-go. And once again, if our, if our analysis, interpretation, methodology that was provided to us by LifeWorks is flawed, please show us your work. Trevor Toome has done the work. He comes to a very different conclusion than you did, 20 to 25 percent. Is he wrong? Well, look, Bassie, I'm not, I'm not a, a lawyer, an economist, or an actuary. I know that we RFP'd um, our, our commission study out. Morneau Chappelle won the bid, um, well-known, reputable actuarial firm from across Canada, and they've done the work. We've had it validated by many uh, actuaries uh, and legal firms. Uh, Trevor's come to a different conclusion, and he's put it in the public sphere to, you know, discuss and dig into, so... I'd say that's more than the feds have done to this point. So should the feds provide you with a number? Are we to interpret from that that you're open to, it's not going to be 50%. I think they've been pretty clear on that. Are we to interpret from the fact that you want that number from the federal government that you anticipate a negotiation at which you could settle for something less than 50%? Well, like I've said all along, the only negotiation that I'm mandated to have is with Albertans. But if the feds... Uh, have something different to tell us, a different number and show their work, that would definitely change the conversation that I'm having with Albertans. And I'd like to do that as soon as possible. Well, well Minister, it, I mean, I, I take your point on having to negotiate with Albertans, but it, but it is kind of in your mandate as well that you're going to have to negotiate with the federal government because that's how the CPP Act works, right? You give notice, you want to leave, and then you have to negotiate how much you're entitled to with the federal government. Uh, fair. I, I think it's pretty pretty early for me to presuppose much when they haven't given us a number shown their work or even responded back to us with anything other than childish condescending letters the only thing they've showed that they've said clearly is that it's alberta's right to withdraw yeah i i take your point on that but i think also this is at your 
province's insistence, right? You're the ones bringing up the prospect of leaving. You've just made that public in the last month or so. Uh, I, I take your point on wanting to get some more information about where they stand, but ultimately, uh, you're going to have to, I mean, you're, you've already started consult consultations and the process to decide a referendum without that number. Well, no, we, what we've said clearly is that we would never proceed without a referendum. It will be, it will be up to us to decide if there's enough interest from Albertans to, per, to proceed with that. Uh, but what the report shows is that we're owed $334 billion or something uh, within the range. This is using publicly available data. There's, there's data that, that LifeWorks um, doesn't have. And it acknowledges that it's within a range of uh, 260 billion to 360 billion. Uh, that's that's the conversation that we're looking for clarity with the feds on. I just want to be clear then on the parameters of what you anticipate you as the finance minister will be negotiating, because what if the federal government comes back and says it's 100 billion dollars? Right, that's our that's our number. Are, are you willing to negotiate away from the position or, or the, the, the numbers that LifeWorks has arrived at? Because you haven't clearly answered that. Well, I, I don't think I clearly can, Vassy. I think we don't have a number from the feds. They haven't shown their work to see if, if uh, there's anyone that will validate um, their own analysis and interpretation. So I think it's, it's very early days. We're seeing... Much of what the country is talking about is the regional disparities around the um, how they're how they're providing exemptions on heating fuel for a certain part of the country. So there's lots lots of conversations being going on. I'm just Alberta's finance minister that was tasked with having this conversation with Albertans, looking for more information with the feds. There's lots of other things that I expect will be brought up at our FPT meeting, and I look forward to those. And I know some of the other finance ministers from across the country as well. Sure, and we've been asking a lot of questions of the federal government around that decision when it comes to the carbon tax as well. But I want to just focus for a moment again on the decision that your government is considering around pulling out from the CPP. And I just want to ask you bluntly, why are, why are you doing it and, and why now? And I want to point to the public opinion polling that has been done so far in the province since the LifeWorks uh, paper was, was released. 52% of Albertans polled by abacus data said they think it's a bad or very bad idea to pull out of CPP. What, what do you take from that? Well, I, I take from it that those those Albertans uh, shouldn't be concer concerned about anything because all all we've committed to is a conversation and engagement. We're not at a place, you know, when we when we hired the panel to go out, we hired them to run till till May. They haven't even they haven't even got through their initial uh, telephone town halls, let alone some of the other engagement they have planned. So there'll be lots of opportunity for us to gauge the interest of Albertans. But I just say we're committed that we will never proceed with this without a referendum. If Albertans uh, don't support this idea, then uh, it, it, won't, it won't continue. But the, we're not at that place yet. We're, we're, the place I feel we're at is the place where we want to give them the most accurate information we can. And I can't do that until the feds bring something to the table. I know your time is limited, but I just want to make sure I'm clear as well for Albertans who are unsure of this right now. Uh, we talked earlier on my other program about by which metric you're going to judge whether or not you proceed to a referendum, which is a really crucial decision your government is going to make. You at first said you'd base it on a feeling you derive from all the consultations that are going on, but added there would, later there would be some object, objective data. What objective data do you anticipate you will base this decision on a referendum on? Well, look, we've we've asked the we've asked the panel to provide us with a, a what have they heard document with uh, full recommendations to the cabinet and premier. I know there's um, seventy or seventy five thousand submissions to the survey. Uh, every every MLA's inbox is full with uh, emails from Albertans. You mentioned polling. I'm sure there'll be more. So there'll be lots of objective data for. Um, that decision to be made. Very quickly, I know you have to go into the legislature. Will it be made public, all of that data? Uh, will the data be made public? Like, uh, will everything you base your decision on, all the things you just mentioned, the surveys, the emails, all that stuff, will, will everything be made public so Albertans can see exactly what you base your decision on? Well, I think uh, it's probably too early to tell, Vassy. I, I don't have that answer for you. That's something that I'd have to discuss with the panel. Um, look at their terms of reference and and what we've discussed with the premier and cabinet, but uh, we'll we'll see as it rolls out.
Okay, Minister, I'll leave it there. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you.